Fred is one of those men that um, you want to follow. Listen, we don't always know which path to take. It's helpful if we have someone to go before us, right? And to, and to, and to guide us and encourage us. That, that's who that and Fred is that person this morning. God has lifted him up. God has, I watch this man all the time, and he is, a, he is an incredible, serving, humble man. He's a man you can trust. He's a man that, that you want to follow his lead. Hey, I'm encouraging you guys this morning. Be in tune to what the God, what God speaks to Fred. Because that, that is message is for you. Okay? Thanks, you guys, for the Table leaders, thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody. After that intro, I just need to uh, ask forgiveness for the ways that I don't measure up. Uh, nobody can measure up to that. Thank you, Lord, that your mercies are new every morning. And your mercy endures forever, and I need it every day, as we all do. Hey, you guys, are you ready to have some fun this morning? We're, we're going to do things a little different than we've done uh, years before. I'm going to speak for a little bit, but then um, we're going to have some, uh, what I believe is going to be some very important times at, at our tables. So... Uh, so let me just start with this. Uh, you guys, look around. You look around at our, our situation that we're in in the world today. We are at war. We are in a spiritual battle the likes of which none of us has ever seen. And it's worldwide. Do you guys agree? Do you guys think that, we're, we're, that we're, this is a very unusual, very difficult time? Do you guys agree with that? Yeah, yeah it is. And, you know, this war, we're going to talk about spiritual war. This war has been accelerating over the last couple of decades, but um, it really made a jump in 2020, and that was with the onset of COVID and the lockdowns. And I just want to say this as a, as a spiritual warrior myself. The enemy has really made an attempt to overwhelm us with a huge onslaught of what has become, I believe, one thing after another that just kind of has been coming and has been coming on strong for the last two and a half years. We have had really an unprecedented amount of disinformation and misinformation coming from all over the place, but especially from the news media and from our government. We've had conflicting stories about the vaccines, about COVID treatments, about COVID deaths, about the value or non-value of masks. Those are just some of the issues. And this, in turn, has led to a lot of confusion in our world, a lot of fear, and oftentimes arguments between each other. So disinformation is a strategy from the enemy. Another strategy from the enemy has been division and hatred on a scale that we've never seen before. So instead of having rational discussions about the issues, um, it has become the norm to engage in personal destruction and character assassination of anyone who doesn't hold the same views as you. You guys, any of you experienced some of that? Yeah. Um, a lot of the times this even spreads to families and families that have previously been close and have gotten together on a regular basis. So. A lot of the time, uh, we've seen this. If, if you and your family, even extended family, you can't agree about whether to be vaccinated or not, or whether to wear a mask or not, or whether to socially distance or not, um, many families have just chosen not to get together because it's just too painful. They want to avoid arguments. So all of this has led to a lot of discouragement and a lot of fear. And so as a result, uh, what we have in our society right now, we have anxiety and depression coming at us on a scale that we've never seen. And I can tell you this as a psychiatrist because I'm seeing it in my practice. I, I can tell you, and I'm a child and adolescent psychiatrist, I can tell you that out of all the children and adolescents that I'm currently treating for anxiety or depression, one of two things, they either became anxious or depressed during COVID, or if they were anxious or depressed prior to COVID, the isolation that happened with COVID 
made their condition worse. I'm telling you, it's an epidemic. It's, um, it's just, you know, you can't even believe it. I go to work every day and I say, Lord, how am I going to help these people? Um, so all of this, the discouragement, the, uh, the disinformation, the division, uh, all of this has really led to the enemy's biggest overall strategy, which is what? I believe it's the strategy of disconnection. With the onset of COVID, there was just massive disconnection from every side, and we still haven't recovered from it. So think about this, just to remind you. In a matter of just a few weeks, uh, when COVID came and, and it was a, a crisis, which, by the way, was only going to happen for a couple of weeks, remember? We were just going to, you know, we were just going to do some stuff and change some things, and then everything was going to come back to normal and be okay. Well, guess what? It extended on and on and on and on and on. And I don't know if you know this, but our, our nation is still officially in a state of emergency, uh, which state of emergency, all that means is that um, the government can basically do anything that it wants in the, in the, in the, uh, uh, in the name of this is an emergency. So we're, we're, we, need to, we really need to get out of that state. But anyways, matter of just a few weeks, think about this. This is what happened. Our schools shut down. Uh, everyone from kindergarten to college had to have remote instruction. So gathering for school was not possible. Gathering together in person. Many of our businesses shut down. The state decided whether your business was either essential or non-essential. If it was deemed to be non-essential, uh, you couldn't operate your business unless you could do it online. You guys, any of you have had the, still felt the consequences of that? Yeah. You're not saying it, but I know you were. I'm right out there. <laughs> Hospitals and clinics, doctor's appointments and surgeries, elective surgeries were canceled unless it was an emergency or unless it was COVID related. Churches, how about this? In a matter of about two weeks, Church buildings were shut down. A lot of churches were closed, and they have not reopened many of them. And many people started going to church online. And you know what? Many of those people haven't come back yet in person. So we're still feeling the effects of that. Restaurants, drive through in your car was about the only way that you could eat out. And that was keep, keeping us isolated, keeping us from each other. Entertainment, movies, going to the movies, sports, going to a sports event even going to theme parks like Disneyland, that was no longer available to go in person. We had to just stay at home. Uh, in fact, here's the, here's the ultimate thing. We were even instructed from the state uh, not to get together as families for the holidays. And if we did, we, the instruction was we have to socially distance and we have to wear masks even in our own home. Only taking our masks off, even when we're eating dinner, only taking our masks off when we take a bite to eat, and then in between bites, we put the mask back up again in our own homes. This is the instruction from the government. I mean, is this crazy or what? This is like extreme, okay? We've never, none of us have ever experienced that before. So COVID caused us to isolate and disconnect from each other, and in fact, to fear actually interactions with one another, because we didn't know where were we gonna get COVID from our neighbor, and if we got COVID, were we going to end up having to go to the hospital, be on a ventilator? Were we going to die from it? Um, why is this a scheme of the enemy? So, because we're talking about spiritual warfare here. This is why. Because God, as we know, God is love. And love is totally relational. Right? God created us and wired us for relationship, both with him and with each other. And all of the attacks we just mentioned are designed to do what? They're designed to separate us, to destroy relationships, and to cause us to be disconnected with God and with each other. And this disconnection is warfare at its peak. Disconnection is a comprehensive plan of the enemy. It happens on three levels. Disconnection with God, our vertical connection. Disconnection with each other, our horizontal connection and even disconnection with our purpose. Why was I created? Why is there so much confusion? Why do I not know even what to do, let alone what I'm supposed to be doing in the Lord? This is, believe me, this is the enemy's plan to take us out, disconnection. It's been happening actually over the past several decades. 
but the COVID crisis caused it to really, really accelerate. So look, if you're here this morning and you're feeling somewhat disconnected, guess what? You're not alone. Millions of people across the US and even across the world are with you. In fact, it's so many people uh, who feel disconnected that it's becoming normal to feel this way. So here's the question. Is the Lord unaware of these schemes and attacks from the enemy? What do you think? No, 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 not at all. How do we know this? Well, the Bible actually addresses this in a couple of key passages. So listen to the passages, see if you can relate. First passage, I'm just going to read it to you. First passage is in 2 Timothy chapter 3. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And from such people, turn away. That's pretty good advice. You guys agree that we're in perilous times? Does any of this sound familiar? Yep. Evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. That's right out of the word. Isaiah 5.20 says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Have we been seeing any of that on the news? Is that somewhat confusing? Yep, it sure is. Matthew. Here's the other passage, main passage. Matthew 24. Verses 4 to 14. Jesus said, Watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming I'm the Messiah and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you're not alarmed. Such things must happen, must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you'll be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. That's pretty heavy. And you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. And it says this, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. So that's pretty heavy. Let's just, um, oh, the many will be saved, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. So what he's trying to say here is that, I believe what he's trying to say is that we're, we're in the end times, the end times are fasting appro fast approaching. And you know this, that when you're talking about birth pains, you're talking about women who are going into labor, and we all know this, the way this works is that, is that women go into labor, they start to have birth pains, and they're kind of mild to moderate pains, and they come somewhat spread apart. Then as things progress, the pains get more intense, and they become closer together until they become closer and closer and closer and closer, and then it's one continuous pain, and then this is right before Know, right before they, um, they give birth. And so what I believe and what I believe we're seeing in our world is that we're seeing um, the beginning of birth pains. We're seeing things getting worse and hotter and more difficult in our culture, and those, those things are coming closer together. I think in some ways we're in a bit of a reprieve now because the whole COVID crisis is on hold for now. But believe me, there's, there's more stuff coming, and we need to be prepared for it. Amen? Right, so uh, the good news is this. Um, so Jesus, Jesus and the Lord is not, are not caught unawares. They're fully aware, they're no, you know, there's not an anxiety in heaven. Oh my gosh, what's happening? You know, things are not going according to plan. Uh, the good news is that this, in the end times, in the midst of unprecedented darkness, the gospel is gonna be preached everywhere. Uh, it's not gonna stop the gospel from going forth. 
testifying of the goodness, love, power, and authority of the Lord. Isaiah 59 says this, 59, 19. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will do what? Raise up a standard against him. That's right. So it doesn't matter how much of a flood there is, the Lord's going to raise up a standard. Amen. Come on, that's good news, amen? amen. Yeah. Good news. It's apparent that God knows all about the times we're living in. He's not surprised. And he has a plan. Let me ask you a question. What is God's plan? What does God? What is God's plan to turn things around? I'm going to give you a hint. It's not Donald Trump, and it's not the Supreme Court. Anyone want to venture a guess as to what God's plan is? It's Jesus Christ, yes. That's always been his plan. But how is Jesus Christ going to manifest himself? Through us. Through us. Yeah, his plan is us. He doesn't have a plan B. His plan is ordinary people who walk in obedience to God and do extraordinary things. How? Empowered by the Holy Spirit. Amen? That's it. it. That's you and me. So you say, sometimes I say, who, me? Not me. I'm just a person. I'm just trying to take care of myself and my family. That in itself is pretty overwhelming. I can barely keep my head above water. Okay? Anybody? Can anybody relate to that? Yep. Half of you, and then the other half are lying. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's true. That's true. But that's why we have to seek God for his supernatural help. Amen. Because he called us in the midst of our own difficulty, in the midst of our own pain, in the midst of our own isolation. He called us to do his will, to advance the gospel, and to transform the world. That's his calling. If you have any doubts about this, let's read Matthew 28. He says, this is the Great Commission. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely, and surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. No, it's very clear, you guys. His plan is us. And so this is his plan. He plans to connect us where we've been disconnected and to send us out where the world, which is growing, as desperate as we may feel, the world is even more desperate. It's getting more desperate by the day. He's calling us to go out and spread the good news of the gospel like never before. His plan is to connect us. You guys, you guys believe this? Yeah. Yep. That's where we're at. Hey, I'm, I'm at it too. I'm not preaching to you. I'm saying, look, I'm right here. Where I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed myself, but God's calling us out. <clears throat> so how is he going to connect us? Just, there are three levels that we need to be connected on. We need to be connected individually. We need to be connected to God. We need to learn our identity and our authority in Christ without question. We need to learn how to come into God's presence and how, in fact, to walk in his presence every day. This is so important because... The world is less and less dependable. We can't depend on what we see on TV for the news. We have to ask the Lord, Lord, what's the truth in all this? Amen? You guys, a lot of you have been doing that already. Are times not getting more desperate? Yes, they absolutely are. So that's part one. That's, that's one level, is individual connection with the Lord. Second level is corporate connection. This is what we need to do if we're not connected. <clears throat> we need to take action, purposeful action to connect, first of all, to our families, but then to our friends. And if we don't have friends, we need to purpose to build significant and even lifelong friendships. That is gonna be just, that's not optional. That's gonna be essential in the days ahead. Um, men are, you know, we've been talking about this a little bit. Women are a lot more naturally uh, geared towards connecting with each other than men are. Men, you know, you guys know this, I think, but. You know, when they've done studies on, on kids and on, on people, the difference between boys and girls and then men and women is that uh, women have a lot, I don't know how many hundreds of words it is that they speak each day. 
men have like a lot less words in this understand. <laughs> men like to grunt and yell and, and, and do things that you can't really verbalize. Um, and then this is, this is the problem in marriages. So let me just give you a little marriage counseling. When you get home at the end of the day, you're about done with your word. Your word quota for the day is about done. Not so for your wife. Your wife is ready to go. Come on, honey, talk with me. Tell me how was your day? Good. What did you do? Nothing. Um, we got a little learning to do, amen? Just saying, just saying. And uh, by the way, so here's a little advertisement here. Here's a great opportunity to get connected. It's called The Journey. Have you, any of you guys heard about The Journey? Yeah. Any of you guys participated in The Journey? Come on, you know, you have to testify. Keep your hand up, right there. Franco and Mike are the leaders. Mike, where are you? Mike's right over there. Mike, just stand up for a second. Mike and Franco are leading this thing. And then, go ahead, go ahead. Mike and Franco have been leading this thing for six years. So um, it's not a, this is not like a passing fad, okay? The journey is open and available for anyone who wants to do it. And basically everyone, every one of you who is in the journey, before you started the journey, most of you were pretty disconnected, weren't you? Yes, nod your head yes. You were, that's why you did it. The journey meets every Thursday, seven o'clock, room 201, right here at Canyon Hills. You're, you're welcome. Um, this year, there's actually gonna be a journey group for not only for men, but for couples as well. So if you wanna come and bring your wife, that's a good idea. And then she can use the words that she has left uh, for the journey group, <laughs> and you're off the hook. It's a, good, it's a good plan right there. Come on. Um, let me tell you what's gonna happen. Involvement with this ministry will connect you with other men, and will connect you with couples as well. It's going to help you grow in the Lord. It's going to change. I'm telling you, I'm not under, I'm not overdoing this. I believe it's going to change the trajectory of your life. Talk with Mike. Mike's going to be around. He's going to stick around afterwards. He's got this light blue shirt on. He just got back from his 25th anniversary with his wife in Hawaii. So he is, and he was very tired, but he was willing to come here because he knew that this is going to be an important morning. So talk with, talk with Mike. And talk with some of the people that have done the journey, and uh, um, you're gonna, I, I guarantee you, it will be well worth, the, well worth the, uh, the effort that you put into it. Okay, so we have individual connection with God, uh, corporate connection with each other. The third and final connection, I believe, is connection to our purpose. What were we created for? You may not really know, and that's okay, but God wants to show you. He has a unique plan for each one of us. The plan that he has for your life is not the same as any other of the men in here or anybody else on the planet. He connected you uniquely, and he wants you to know what he's called you to do. One of the best ways to minister your purpose is to minister to others who have a need. To connect you to your purpose is to minister to others who have a need. This is going to get you in touch with your purpose like nothing else. How does this work? So you step out to minister where there's a need, okay? When you see that need, which is involved with people, when you see that need face to face, and there's a lot of needs in our community, believe me, you look at the need, and then this is what happens. You say, God, I just, I don't know how to help in this situation, but I see these people who are hurting. Um, I can't do everything, but if you want me to do this, Lord, I will do something to help. That is a great attitude to be in. Listen to me. God loves it when you make yourself available to him. He cares a lot more about your availability than he cares about your ability. Okay? He can work with your, with your lack of ability. All right? He knows your need. He knows a lot more about you do than you do yourself. He just thinks differently than we do. We think we've got to prepare first and then, and then we'll go do something. That's not... That's not God. I mean, he wants us to prepare, but he wants us to, to, to reach out to people that are hurting more than we are. So here's what we think. We think, well, I have a lot of things that I need to work on in my own life. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get my life together first, and then I'll be ready to be used by God. Now, let me just tell you something. That right there is a thought from hell. 
Um, and, and let me tell you why it is. Because guess what? I hate to break it to you. You're never going to get your life totally together. Not on this world. You're not. So stop deceiving yourself. You're always going to have something that you're going to need to work on. Amen? Do I hear a witness here? Come on, let's just let's get real, real about this. God knows our weaknesses better than we do. And the amazing thing is, he still wants to use us. That's what's incredible. And he still plans to use us. In Daniel, it says, And the people who know their God will be strong and will do great exploits. It does not say, And the people who have their lives together will be strong and will do great exploits. No, it says the people who know their, their God will be strong and will do great exploits. How many people in here know their God? Yep. Amen. Amen. God has called you to do great exploits. That's his expectation. So look, look, when you make yourself available to God, this is what you're doing. You are allowing God to break your heart for what breaks his heart. And I'm telling you, that will change your life. Um, oh, should I tell you about the story of my involvement with one door? I don't know if I got the time. I'll just, I'll do it real quick. One Door. It's a ministry that was started a few years ago by Louis and Jairus Wright, who are, you know, Louis, if you know him, he came out of a heroin addiction, and uh, amazingly enough, uh, his wife Jairus stuck with him and didn't divorce him, though she had many opportunities. Louis, Louis could have been dead a million times by now. Um, they came, uh, they moved up here to, to uh, Bakersfield a few years ago. They did a number of things, decided to start their ministry of one door to minister to the drug addicts and to the homeless. And um, they, 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 they started a ministry, and it was a, they, they had a, a, you know, it's a state. They have to get a license from the state. They have to go through all those kinds of things to do this ministry. They needed a medical director, and when Jairus found out that I was a psychiatrist, she said, oh, perfect, we've got just the man for the job. And um, I was like, well, wait, just hold on a second. Uh, I have a busy life, I have a happy life. Uh, and she said, well, you know, this was, this was, the, this was the, 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 you know, the bait. Well, you know, it's only gonna really be an hour or two a week, that's all you have to do. And uh, so reluctantly I came and, and talked with them and agreed that I would be their medical director because they do need somebody, if you're gonna be detoxed from uh, heroin, you know, there are medications that can be really helpful for you. So I, I understood that there was a need. So I reluctantly left that meeting, and what happened? Uh, I cried the whole, cried the whole rest of the day. Now I'm a crybaby anyway, so normally that's not unusual. But this was ridiculous. This was, this was like at a level where I said, "Okay, God, I hear you talking to me," and what was. This is, this is what was happening with me and this will happen with you. You might not cry as much, it might, 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 might be something else, but, but I was making myself available to be used by the Lord and he said, in no uncertain terms he said, I want to use you. So now here I am, very involved with one door, uh, I hope that someday I'll get paid for what I do, but right now I'm volunteering my time. And in fact, God well, gets better than this. In fact, One Door doesn't really have the finances because we're, we're ministering to people who don't have finances to you know operate the way they need to. So now every month I'm writing a check to One Door. I'm volunteering and I'm writing a check. And, uh, and it's, it's um, and you know what? I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I wouldn't do anything different. Why? Because God called me to do it. And I'm telling you, that is connecting me with my purpose. Part of my purpose is to be the medical director at One Door and help save guys' lives who are, who are strung out on their own. I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying that to pump myself up. I'm saying that because as, if that's true for me, that is true for you also. So, speaking of that, because you're not off the hook, that may have been a good story. And you say, well, I'm not a psychiatrist, so I don't need to do that. Okay, speaking of that, let me tell you about an, an opportunity that you have. 
This is another advertisement, but it's very important. Where there's a need and where you, you can be used greatly by God. Manny Carozales is the founder of Stay Focused Ministries. Any of you know uh, Manny? Any of you heard of Stay Focused? It's an incredible ministry. He's been leading this. He founded this ministry. He's been leading it for a couple decades. Um, Manny ministers to people of all ages, but mainly to teenagers who are heading in the wrong direction in their lives and without intervention will likely end up incarcerated. Some of them even have been incarcerated. They are. This is who they are. They are the fatherless. They are the poor. They, and very likely, they have not had anyone speak anything positive or hopeful into their lives ever. Ever. Manny has great favor in our community, and it's increasing, uh, especially in the schools in Kern County. He is being asked by the school administrators to do assemblies in school, and out of that, there's dozens of teenagers who reach out to him for help with the blessing of the school administrators. I think Manny, I, I, I don't want to get this wrong, but I believe there's something like 60 schools or something that have, that have, have uh, reached out to Manny. Yeah, it's incredible, incredible faith. And part of it is because there's an incredible need. So part of his ministry is to set up a mentoring program between these teenagers and adults. Now there's, the main mentoring program is a one-on-one -on -one mentoring, but I just learned today that there's group mentoring as well. There's mentoring in the schools. There's a variety of different things. This is how it works. You sign up to mentor one of these kids. You go through a four hour training. You meet with, then you meet with the kids in a safe place, a neutral environment. You don't need to invite them over to your house so that they can you know, destroy it and rip you off and stuff and, and you don't wanna do that. But, but you, wanna, you wanna get to know them and so you get into a neutral environment. But it requires an hour a week, that's four hours a month, that's 52 hours for the entire year. And Manny has statistics and stories to show you that this type of contact alone um, in the course of a year, it can change the trajectory of a young person's life. It can keep them out of trouble. It can give them confidence to head in the right direction and help them to become productive citizens. These are kids who don't have fathers, who need spiritual fathers. I mean, they desperately need them. They don't even, they don't even understand how much they need them. And you know what happens when they don't get spiritual fathers? They go to perverted fathers, which are the gangs, because we all have got to have a father in our life. And if we don't have one in the natural, we'll find out, we'll find one that will to be in and to be involved. You know, you have to rip somebody off, you have to kill somebody, you have to rape somebody. I mean, this is just horrible. It's sickening. And the difference can be one man in that person's life that tells them that that God has a plan for them and they can live in a different way. And, and shows up in the flesh. Amen? This is good. So here's the need. Manny has about 200 of these young people who are wanting a mentor and who are waiting for one. Let me just tell you this. Some of them are waiting for you. Some of them are waiting for you. Um, so if you are want to be open to this, to be being connected with your purpose, I'm telling you this will give you something that you you are are going to be like me at one door. You're going to be like you're you're going to love what you're doing because you know that you're impacting somebody's Amen. life. Amen? Amen. So at the back there is one of Manny's assistants. Just raise your hand there. I think Manny's here somewhere. Are you here, Manny? Why don't you stand up? Where are you, Manny? Now, I was going to have Manny up here to talk about what he's doing, but then it would have taken up the whole rest of the time. So, but I'm telling you, Manny is Manny's an incredible man of God, and we love him, and we're just we Manny. I want to be like you when I grow up. I'm just telling you that right now. So, all right, I need to wrap this up. How do we deal with disconnection? Because that's what we're talking about. There's three main areas of disconnection we've talked about. Disconnection with God, it's the vertical. Disconnection with each other, that's the horizontal. Disconnection with our purpose. Okay, how do we take action to change this situation? We need to make up our minds that we need to start building connections. It's not going to happen unless we make up our minds to do this. We connect with God through prayer and reading his word. We connect with others by developing relationships especially in some type of small group where we can build lasting friendships, 
That's what we're going to be talking about all year long. So I'm setting you up for what, what we're going to be looking at this whole year in Armor Up. And we connect with our purpose by serving others in need and letting God break our hearts for the things that break his heart. Um, you guys, the world is getting darker and it's more disconnected in these last days than we are in the last days. But God's plan, I can't emphasize this enough, enough. God's plan is you and his plan is me. In our weakness, in our imperfections, in our not having our lives fully together. Uh, but I'm just telling you this, what happens is if we operate in the will of God and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we can do what God's called us to do. We can't do it on our own, but we are. But if we're walking in dependence on him, we can do great exploits. Um, you are God's plan to turn the world around. God's calling you and me and all of us. He's calling us to step forward for such a time as this. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Amen. So now we're going to go to the fun part of the morning. We're going to go to the table discussion. Um, there's two parts to this table discussion. One is to answer the two questions that we have for you. I think we're, we should be up on the screen. Are they up on the screens yet? Yeah, and for those of you who are in the leadership, I, I, um, I modified one of the questions. So um, thank you for your input, and uh, I have the final say. Uh, so, okay, that's part one. We're going to be answering these questions at our table. The questions are this. How confident are you that you're loved no matter what? And I just put zero to ten, um, uh, or uh, uh, on a scale of zero to ten, how confident are you that, that you are loved no matter what? That's question one. Question two is, what is your purpose? Can you identify that? So what we're going to do is we're going to have about ten to fifteen minutes to talk about that at your tables. And um, if you are, I don't know if there's anybody where there's only like one or two people at your table, but if there is, you need to get you need to get with somebody with other people so that we can have a greater group discussion. And then, after the 10 or 15 minutes, we're going to come back and we're going to have another time at our table. And it's going to be a time of prayer, and that's going to be really exciting. But let's do this right now. Let's just take 10 or 15 minutes, answer those questions, table leaders. Go ahead and, and let's go for it 10 or 15 minutes, and then we'll come back and we'll give you instruction on part two.